Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. Thank you for what you're bringing forth just this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing ongoing messages about the Holy Spirit. And we talked about the rivers of living water in the end time glorious church this morning, which is the way the Holy Spirit works through the living waters that comes into the church and flows out of the church. We saw that this is prophetic of what is going to happen in the end times in this passage of Scripture. Just by review for a few things that we talked about this morning. John 7, 37, the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, the King James says, Let him come unto me and drink. This is talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is the last feast of the seven feasts of the Lord in the third feast season, which speaks of the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And the personal application of the feasts in the body of Christ occurs in the order culminating with the, the final fulfillment of this work in the body of Christ in the fulfillment of tabernacles, which is to bring the church to the place of maturity, fruition, bring the place to them to the place of coming and entering into the spiritual rest, possessing the promises of God, coming into perfection in the Lord, and being the glorious church. And so he says here, this is what he's talking about, the last day. This is a revelation of what is going to be happening in the end time church before the second coming of Jesus. When he says, let us come unto me, the word come is a command. It is not really best translated, let him come unto me. That's just kind of like, you know, let him come if he wants to. Now, this is a command. Imperative mood and a present tense. The imperative mood is a command and the present tense is continuous ongoing action. So this is literally saying, if any man thirst, be coming unto me, a command. And the word drink is the same thing. It is also a present tense verb with a imperative mood, meaning a command. So he's saying, if any man thirsts, he is commanded, be coming unto me and be drinking. And what are we to be drinking in? The rivers of living water that is to come unto us, the waters that come from him, from his word. He that believeth on me, or who is believing on me, and the one who is believing on him takes hold of his word and is a doer of it, walking in the light of it. As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That is what is going to come forth out of the body of Christ. And we talked about as these rivers of living water are coming out, we looked over in Ezekiel chapter 47, which we won't go back through again, but we saw the waters were coming out of the house. And the house is the church. And the waters began to come out every which way, and then they began to rise in the house. And that speaks of the waters are to rise in the body of Christ. To the ankles, then to the knees, then to the loins, then to the place where it over the, covered the entire person. So like a river to swim in. The living waters, this river of living waters is to come into the house of God, which is the church. And we also talked about how in John chapter 2 about the fact that when it speaks of, and we'll just look at this for a moment, the third day, and the third day is speaking of after the two days of the church age. The two days of the church age is 2,000 years, began at 30 A.D., finishes at 20, 30 A.D. It's not done yet. It's got 12 years yet. The third day is the beginning <coughs> of that time, <coughs> and now it says of the third day, there was a marriage in Cain of Galilee, and this marriage speaks of, prophetically, of the marriage of Jesus Christ and the church. When there, Jesus comes back and catches up the church to meet him in the air, goes to heaven for the marriage supper of the Lamb for 10 days before it comes back to bring the final judgment on the nations. We see Jesus was called and his disciples. Not every Christian will be there, only the disciples. The disciples are the ones that hear and do his word, continuing in it, and bring forth fruit, much fruit, and, and 
come to the place of fruit, more fruit, and much fruit in their life. We also saw <coughs> that as they were looking for wine, so what was the answer? Wine speaks of fruitfulness, by the way. And Jesus said that his hour was not come, revealing that the time for the fulfillment of this was not yet. It's not until the second coming of Jesus. And we come down here to verse 6, and we saw the six water pots of stone. Six is the number of man. Water pots is a type of you and me. We are water pots. And what are we to be done? We're to be filled with water. And the water is the washing of the water of the Word that's going to occur in our life, the water of the Word that's going to accomplish the things that God wants. It was for the manner of purifying of the Jews. And so they said, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them to the brim. You and I are to be filled with the water of the Word of God so the river of living water comes into us. That's what God wants. Filled to the brim. That means the top. And then they would draw it out. And what happened when this water, the water became wine, which is fruitfulness, because the water in you indicates the word in you, and it stays in you if you hear and do it, and it will bring forth fruitfulness in your life. When it says the water was made wine, it's not a good translation. The water becomes wine, or has become wine. That's what this word means. It's the word ginomai, not the word meaning made. And when it speaks of this word, one of the things we pointed out is important revelation. This is not talking about it just suddenly happened, because it's a revelation that this work had been ongoing to bring this forth, and it had continuing effects at the time of speaking. It's a prophetic statement, actually. Why? Because it's a perfect tense verb. The perfect tense in the Greek means action completed in the past with present results at the time of speaking. Meaning that this water, which is a type of the Word of God that comes and fills us up, was, had become, has become, as he says, the fruit wine which speaks of fruitfulness, and it was work accomplished in the past with present effects at the time of speaking which speaks of the work of God being done in the church to bring it to perfection and fruitfulness, which is what's going to happen in the end time church. We talked all about this this morning. We also talked about that as the judgments are beginning to come upon the earth, that there will be a river. The streams from the city of God, which is the church where God is inhabiting, that will is the place of the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High, where God is in the midst of her, he will be in the midst of us. We saw this all from Psalms 46, and there were a lot of things we talked about we're not going to be going back through. We covered a lot of things that are very important this morning. And God wants you to understand that you are to become the river of God through the Word in you. And you need to get filled up with the river in you, that it fills you completely. And we did ask the question this morning, how much water is in you? Is it to, to only to the ankles? Is it to the knees? Is it to the loins? Or have you become a river of water, the living water of the Word of God? That's what God wants. That'll happen when you put the Word first place and you seek the things above. We're to seek the things above, not the things on the earth. We've got to get rid of all the sin. We've got to put on the garments of God. We've got to put on all the things that God wants if we are going to be filled with these things. Now, tonight we're going to continue on. We're going to talk about how we get in this river and what this river will do in us and through us. We actually begin by going back to Genesis chapter 2 when we see first use about river. A river went out of Eden to water the garden. Remember, there was no sin at this time in the garden, and there was perfection there. The river went out. Eden means a place of pleasure, a place where it's bringing forth things that are pleasing unto God, his pleasure, his delight going forth. And when it speaks of this coming forth to water the garden, 
It said it was part, parted into four heads. The first one, Pishon, it means increase, meaning the waters that come from God with His pleasure and delight will bring great increase in your life. And the water, the river, is the Word of God that is coming into you. You want to see increase? The Word is what is going to produce it in your life. The second river was called Gihon. This word Gihon means a bursting forth. A bursting forth. It'll bring a bursting forth of the blessings, the promises, the good things in God, of God in your life. And that's what he wants to accomplish for us. Then the third river is the word Hidekel. And it means that which is rapid or something that's moving forth quickly. And that's exactly what God wants in your life. He wants this work being done in your life rapidly, moving forth, like a river that flows continually. And out of you, this river moving forth as it's reaching others. We talked about out of Ezekiel 47. Wherever this river goes, it brings life, it brings healing, and great multitude of fishes, which are souls that are going to be one in these last days, will be the result of the rivers of living water coming out of the church, which is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit because of the Word in you. The name of the fourth river is Euphrates, and Euphrates means fruitfulness. In other words, when the river of God is in you, it is going to bring forth great fruitfulness. God wants this river in you. It will bring, bring great increase, the bursting of the good things of God, the rapid moving forth of the blessings of God and all the things He wants, and great fruitfulness in your life. If you and I are going to be the river of God, we do have to get cleansed. You'll never see the river of God manifest in your life if you don't get cleansed from all the sin, the evil, the things of the flesh, the works of the devil, the evil spirits. You need to get rid of them all. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. Obviously, a lot, of good, a lot of good things have been done in this guy. But he was a leper. He also had some things that weren't right. He had a leper. He was a leper. That's the result of sin. He was unclean. So, the Syrians had gone out by companies, brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that's in Samaria, he would recover him of his leprosy. He's saying, you didn't have to stay in this state. You don't have to stay in your state, regardless of what it is. God is a healer and a deliverer and will restore you and change you and bring forth freedom and liberty. He said, he'll recover you of your leprosy. One went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus saith the maid that's in the, of the land of Israel. The king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I'll send a letter unto the king of Israel. He departed, and he sent a bunch of money with him, brought the letter unto him, and he says here in this letter, Behold, I've here, there, here, therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, he rent his clothes, said, Am I God to kill and to make alive this man to send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. He thought he was against him. But it was so, Elisha, the man of God, had heard the king of Israel, had rent his clothes, and he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come to me, now to me, and he shall know. There's a prophet in Israel. They didn't know. But they were going to know that there was a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses, with his chariot, stood at the door of the house of Elisha. So he's coming to the prophet to see him be recovered. He's standing at the door. And what, what he was expecting things to be done his way. If you expect things to be done your way, it's not going to happen. That was the problem. Elijah, Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. He didn't come out and even greet him. He just sent a messenger and said, This is what you do. Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and my flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. The word Jordan means descender. It causes you to descend, which means you are come, you deal with pride, you deal with selfishness, you deal with a sin, you come in line with what God wants, 
obviously you come to the place of repentance and confession of sin and turn away from everything that is not of the Lord in your life. And that's what he wants. He wants us to be washed of everything that needs to be gotten out of our life. He said, thy flesh will come again, you'll be clean. Did Naaman like and go did, do what he said? No, he was mad about it. He was wroth. He went away. He said, behold, I thought. Anytime you start thinking and thinking what you expect God's going to do, how you think he's going to do it, when he's going to do it and all that, you're in trouble. Because you don't they try to figure things out yourself. You just learn to obey, see? I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Just be gone just like that. Isn't that what so many people have today in the body of Christ? They want the instant, give me my miracle, my healing, my deliverance, or whatever. Bam, just knock it out right there. <laughs> and they fail to understand that everything is a process and everything needs to be rooted out and it will be a little by little process from getting rid of everything in your life, especially casting out the demonic network that's in everybody. Oh, he wanted it his way. He's mad about it. And he even says, are Abana and Far, Par, the rivers in Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away in a rage. He's mad about it. Because he didn't want to do it. He didn't do it the way he wanted it. Don't try to push your agenda on the Lord. You do what he says and follow his pattern. His way is right. So his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldn't thou not have done it? He was used to doing great things. He had a lot of pride, you know. Everybody says, I want to see a great thing happen. Well, God will do a great thing, but he's not going to do it the way you want him to do it because you just want it done now and then go do whatever you want to do. How much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean. They, otherwise, just obey. Do what he says. If he tells you to do it, do it. So he decided to obey. Then when he down, dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. What's the seven about? Seven is the number of completion and perfection, which points towards us getting cleansed completely of everything that is unclean and seeing this perfection come in our life, the completion of the work of God. That's what that's all point. And he had to go down to the Jordan. He had to descend. He had to deal with the pride. He had to deal with everything and come to the place of total repentance, in his life is what that all is pointing towards. If you and I will hear and do what the Word says and follow it exactly, he will cause you to go the same way. You're going to have to get cleansed of everything. It's not going to be a quick thing. It's going to be an ongoing process. He wants a complete work. And until you see the complete work done, you won't see the manifestation of the victory totally. And that's what happened. He had to do it seven times before he became clean. Learn to obey the word, do what he says consistently. The results will come when you've accomplished the great work. If you and I are going to be the, be the river of God, we've got to get cleansed. And the way you get cleansed is getting into the river, causing you to deal with all your sins and all your uncleanness, descending, coming down to deal with everything that is not of the Lord. We see over in Mark chapter 1, in verse 5, when John the Baptist, who was a forerunner of Jesus, verse 5, there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, they were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, same river. You've got to come to the place of descending. You've got to come to the place of repentance. You've got to come to the place of dealing with everything that is not of the Lord, and they were confessing their sins. Same thing. If you're going to ever get the river in you, you're going to have to confess your sins and have true repentance, a true godly sorrow that works repentance in your life. And do things God's way. They had to make an effort to come out to where he was. He didn't come to them. They had to come out to where he was. You're going to have to follow the way of the Lord and do the things that he wants. One of the scriptures we did look at this morning, we'll look at again to see this washing, this cleansing come forth in your life. John 15, I'm the true vine, my father's the husbandman. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You must go through the cleansing process to bring forth more fruit. He wants us cleansed of sin, cleansed of the works of the flesh, cleansed of all the things, all the evil spirits cast out. All the cleansing has to be accomplished in our life. Then you'll be able to bring forth more fruit. You now he says, you're clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. And we took some time to point this out, what this really is saying. Many people think, well, if I heard the word, does that mean it just automatically cleanses me? No. When it says this, the word through in the Greek is the word dia. Dia is a preposition. And this word, depending upon what is following and what case it's in, depends, determines what, how you translate it. When you... I put the cursor over this word down here. This is the, what's called the SCM, which is the Scrivener's Greek translation of the King James. When I put this here, it says, when it's with a genitive, that stands for genitive, one of the cases, there's five cases, the genitive is the case it means through. But if it's in the accusative, which is a different case, it means because of. The King James translated it through. It's a mistake. Because when I follow this, what follows it, you'll notice this is an accusative definite article. And this is accusative word, the word meaning word. So it should say because of the word. This is why we put Young's up here, the finest translation that I know of the New Testament, because he corrects all these things and does much according to the Greek accurately. So he says, now are you clean because of the word that I have spoken unto you? Well, that means there's something going on with the word. Because of the word, what's the word going to do? It's going to do something in you. It's going to cause you to obey it and walk in it if you see the fruit. And when it says that I've spoken unto you, again, that's not like I just heard it once and then it automatically did it. Because when you put the cursor over the word spoken, this is important. The word spoken is a perfect word tense verb. When you see a perfect tense, it's a significant statement. It has theological significance and understanding what's being said. The perfect tense in the Greek refers to action completed in the past with present effects at the time of speaking. In other words, it's saying you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you in the past that has present effects now. Now why would that be? Because you took hold of it you acted on the word, you did it, you obeyed it, the things that were taught you in the past, and you're seeing the present effects of it because you did what the word says. That is what it's talking about. Because of the word that you've heard, and if you've acted upon it and done what he says, it will produce this cleansing in your life. And that is the key. We must get the word in us, must be hearers and doers of the word, if we are going to see this tremendous work be done. The river is coming into you. Now, people have not understood. They have under, not understood the working of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, remember, this is all talking about the working of the Holy Spirit, to bring forth these rivers of living water. And how does it come? Through the Word in us, and the Holy Spirit operates through us like the river flowing forth out of us. If we have the river in us through the Word, then we've got God in us. If we're drinking from the river, we're drinking the word, then we're drinking of the things of God. If we're speaking the word or acting on it in some way, we're going to release that river to flow out of us. And that's what God wants. Therefore, we need to get the river of God in us. We see a scripture over in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 came to pass as they went through the enter into a certain village, a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, sat at his feet and heard his word. Well, if she's hearing the word, that's the water of the word coming into her. And that's that river beginning to come into her through the word of God. While Martha was cumbered about with much serving. Serving will not produce the river of God in you. Serving because of the word in you will for, show forth that you are doing the word and you are releasing the river of God out of you. 
serving without hearing and doing the word is not going to produce it whatsoever. You need the word in you. Otherwise, and what does the word coming into you do? It produces intimate, personal fellowship and relationship with God. As you hear and do the word, you learn his ways, you walk in his ways, you obey him, you're following the Lord. And that is what God wants. He wants to see these things come forth in your life. Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 7. It's speaking of when they were journeying from place to place, and it comes to a place called, this word, yat Batha, literally is what it means. And it says, a land of rivers of waters. Aha. That means this is what produces the rivers of waters in you. And this is the place of pleasantness. Pleasantness, which is being pleasing unto God. Because this word it comes from, 3192, when we put this down below, it means pleasing. You will come to the place of pleasing God, which will be pleasant in His sight, the land of rivers of waters, because you've been getting the word in you, you will begin to see God accomplish this great and mighty work in your life. We can see this. It's going to bring blessing. It's going to bring everything that you have need of in your life through the Word. And this is the river coming unto you. Psalms 1, verse 2. Speaking of the guy whose delight is in the law of the Lord, in his law does he meditate day and night. That's the Word in you. That's the Word that you're hearing and doing and thinking upon and, and walking in consistently throughout your life. Notice, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. The tree right by the waters, he's soaking up the water. You and I are the trees, trees of righteousness. And we're to be soaking up the water of the word of God because we planted ourselves right by the water. We are receiving the word of God, the water, that brings forth his fruit in his season. Of course, that's what it will produce. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. God wants everything that we do to prosper. He wants us not to wither. He wants us to bring forth fruit. That's all the result of the water of God coming into you, the spiritual house of God. God wants you to delight in the Word. He wants you to meditate on it day and night, abide in it in the New Testament, and you will see God's tremendous blessings coming upon you in your life. In Psalms 36, we pick up over in verse 7. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. You trust. You trust in him. You trust under his protection and everything that he accomplishes in your life. What's going to happen when you trust in him? You shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Because you're building the spiritual house of God. You're coming into fellowship with him. You're a part of the corporate house but you're an individual house that you've been building through the things that you're doing. And what's going to happen with the fatness of the house? Thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. You come, the house of God is us, but it also is the church. Remember, the church is the house of God. And what happens? You come and you hear the word. You're drinking of the river of his pleasures. The word of God is coming into you. The things that he wants to come into you in your life that's pleasing to him that will produce his pleasant blessings, the good things that he wants to bring forth for you. Notice, he said that they were be abundantly satisfied. And he also said, with thee is the fountain of life. The fountain will come out of you, of life, rivers of living water. In thy light shall we see light. Where's the, what's the light? The word. In the word, you're going to get revelation. You're going to see the light. You're going to know the ways of the Lord. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. This also means this loving kindness that comes is those who know him, who are going to walk in his ways, and the way you know him is through the word. And you have upright, you're upright in heart. God's blessings will come on those who are upright in heart, who become a, have a fountain of life, because they have the word in them, and they are built their spiritual house through hearing the word of God. Psalms 65, verse 9. 
Thou visitest the earth and waterest it. Thou greatly enriched it with the river of God. This river of God, which is full of water, that's supposed to come into you. If you're going to see the Holy Spirit work in your life, remember the, the flowing of the rivers of living water, which is all about the Holy Spirit operating through you, you've got to get full of the water. You've got to get full of the Word. The river of God, which is full of water, thou preparest them corn when thou hast so provided it. Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it soft with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof. All of God's blessing comes because of the waters. The rivers of God will bring abundance and tremendous blessings in your life. Psalm 72, verse 6. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. Remember, we've talked about the way he comes to us with his doctrine. It's like the rain that comes. The doctrine of God comes like the water and the showers coming down to teach us the word of God and get us filled up with the water. Get us the water pots filled up with the word of God. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. So what's going to happen? The water of God coming into you if you are righteous means you're doing the word of righteousness. You've dealt with sin. You got rid of the unrighteous. You're walking in righteousness. You're bringing fruits of righteousness. You're going to flourish. And the abundance of peace. Righteousness and peace go together time and time throughout the scripture. We've talked about that in the past. As long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river and the ends of the earth. You're going to have dominion and operate over all the works of the enemies because of the water that's coming into you, the river of God that's coming into you because of this tremendous water that's coming to fill you up. The Lord, He is our rock. He's the one who brings everything forth. Psalm 78, verse 16, He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. Who's the rock? The rock is the Lord. It's all pointing towards the Lord. He is the rock of our salvation. Our God is our rock. Many scriptures throughout the word speak of this. And what happens? These streams come out of Jesus, the word of God. And waters run down like rivers. They're flowing forth. Out of who? Out of you and me. As you and I become the river, like having this river of God in us, because we come to him being abiding in him and he is of course we are living stones he's the cornerstone we are the house of god this rock that is being established in the body of christ that's the mighty church psalms 105 verse 41 he opened the rock and waters gushed out ah when things get opened up in the word of god from god it's going to bring the waters. And revelation will come to you. They ran into dry places like a river. Things that are dry aren't going to be dry any longer. Dry speaks of no blessing, speaks of rebellion, speaks of the, of the struct, destructive works of the enemy. No, that's going to now, the river's going to come, and it's going to work to, as the waters rush, to change the situation. That's why you've got to get the waters in you. The Holy Spirit works through the waters. Many people have not understood this, unfortunately, in the body of Christ. And they've missed it totally. Many people are calling fire for like from the Holy Spirit, and they've missed it totally because the Holy Spirit doesn't come like fire. Fire burns things up and consumes things. It consumes the sacrifice. These people that are calling fire down, they're totally in the flesh. It's totally contrary to the word. There's no scripture on it whatsoever, ever showing you do that. In fact, the only guys that called fire down, remember, those guys said, you want to call fire down? You don't know what spirit you are. You're a wrong spirit. You don't do that. You're not the one that's calling these things. You're the one that's doing the word, and God's the one who is bringing these things forth. Fire destroy, burns things up. You know, people want to call fire down to cast out demons and things like that. That's ridiculous. You cast them out with authority, commanding them to come out in the name of Jesus. That's the way you do it. You don't do it by calling fire down. 
because you're not going to burn up the demons. Fire consumes things. You're simply going to cast them out. And what's happening is the word is in, this is what we act upon, and it's the waters of the living, living waters of rushing coming out of us to do this. All these people that do this are totally in the flesh and totally in error. Proverbs 13, verse 14. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. What do we need? If we're going to have a fountain of life in you, what do you got to have? Wisdom. Where does wisdom come from? The word of God in you. Hearing the word and doing the word produces wisdom unto you. And what does it enable you to do? To depart from the snares of death, you can come out of all the bondages of the enemy. We see another place that's going to produce this river in you, this fountain within you. Proverbs 14, verse 27. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is the fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord is what you've got to have. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, beginning of wisdom. By the fear of the Lord, you will depart from the ways of darkness and ways of sin and all the ways that bring death. You depart from the snares of death. Fear of the Lord is putting the word of God first place. Those that have the fear of the Lord delight greatly in the commandments of the Lord. They know God's word is the truth. When they obey it, they'll be blessed. But if they don't, they know that curses will come upon them. That's why the fear of the Lord. We need to have the fear of the Lord if we are going to see this fountain of life come out of us because we'll be hearing and doing the word, see? And it will bring these great, the blessings out of us to depart from the ways of the enemy. Proverbs 16.22 Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. Spiritual understanding. How does that come? From the word in you that you're hearing and doing. It's imparted to you. It's going to be like a wellspring, a spring, or a fountain of life. It's coming out of the midst of you, out of the inside of you, the one who has it. You see, the way God works, he comes into you, and he manifests himself out through you, through the word that's in you, understanding of the word of God. Proverbs 18, verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. What are the words doing? They're bringing things out from within you, aren't they? They're like deep waters bringing things out. And the wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Ah, that's the flowing river. This is like, this word actually means a, can mean a torrent or a stream flowing out of you. It's a flowing stream or flowing brook, or even a torrent flowing out. Why? Because you get wisdom. God wants you, where do you get wisdom from? The word. Hearing and doing the word is a key. You get knowledge, it produces understanding, it produces wisdom, and then what do you do? You speak it forth. And when you speak it forth, that's the way you release the things. Look what Jesus did. He was upholding all things, everything, bringing everything forth by the spoken word of God that came forth of the power of God, spoken word of his power, which was resident in the word. That's how you are going to do things as well. See, God wants you to get the river in you. So the river can flow, not only operate in you, but flow out of you. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, and a man of understanding will draw it out. Aha, you need to get God's counsel, his counsel that comes from the word. It's like deep water. How are you going to get it out? Through understanding, spiritual understanding. There is no replacement for you getting knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Remember what it says in Proverbs? Get wisdom. Get, it's the principal thing. Get understanding. Get wisdom, it says. We need to get these things because that's the way God works. That's the way he brought everything even into being. His understanding and, and wisdom brought all the creation into being. As you get understanding and wisdom, that's how God accomplishes things. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 26. A righteous man falling down before the wicked, oh, well, that means he must have got in sin. He's not, right, he's not walking in righteousness anymore. He's got unrighteousness in him now. Is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. You can have a bad fountain in you. You can have a bad spring coming out of you because of unrighteousness in you. That's why you can't have any unrighteousness in you. 
That's why you confess your sins, receive forgiveness, cleansing from all unrighteousness, and you repent and turn from it and do the word of righteousness. Otherwise, you'll be a troubled fountain. <laughs> and you'll be corrupt spring, it says. You'll be corrupt. That's going to be a problem. Are you going to be able to bring out good things? No, you're going to see curses come upon you because you're giving place to the devil through the areas of sin. And you're, what's in you will not be good. That's why you've got to guard yourself and not let the enemy get into you. Of course, what does the devil do? He wants to get into you through all the evil. And he also, anything that God brings in, he wants to take it out. Why do you think the devil's after the word? He knows what the word will do in you. When you hear the word immediately, remember the parable of the sower? He comes to take it out immediately, doesn't he? Because he knows what the word will do. It, that will bring the revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit and understanding and it'll bring wisdom and you'll see the waters of the word working in you to accomplish everything that he purposes. That is what we must understand, which means what? We gotta be righteous. We can't let any un unrighteous in us or else it will corrupt what is on the inside of, out of you. We also see in Isaiah chapter 11, verse nine, there shall, shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. No hurt, no destruction. Well, that means you're walking in victory. Why? Because of the knowledge of God. And notice it's, it's explained, the earth is, gets full of the knowledge just like the waters are covering the sea, these waters. Otherwise, the knowledge in you is producing the waters in you that's going to, you get full of the knowledge of God, it's going to manifest great blessings and you're not going to get hurt or destroyed. You're going to walk in victory. You're going to have victory in all times. You're going to be uh, in that place of refuge and, and protection from the Lord. We even see this same kind of statement said a little bit different, talking about the manifestation of the glory. Habakkuk 2 verse 14. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord comes because of the word of God that's in us, that we're obeying, that we're working out our salvation, building our own spiritual house, being a doer of it, walking, having the fear of the Lord. Remember all those things from Haggai we've talked about? As the waters cover the sea. Waters of knowledge are to come into you and this knowledge of the glory of God, because it'll be manifest in you. We see another thing over in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. The water comes into you through the word. You are a well. The wells of salvation that's going to produce but out of the word in you, in the well, it's going to bring your salvation, it's going to bring your deliverance, it's going to bring your prosperity, your victory, all these things. It's all coming from on the inside of you. God is operating out of you. Remember, the river is God, and the river is God coming into you so he can operate out of you. You are now the temple of God. He's coming to manifest himself in us, see? With joy, you're going to draw waters out of the wells of salvation. That means you need the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your place of protection. Your joy of the Lord is so important because of the fact that you are walking in the ways of the word instead of letting the devil get to you and pull you down with depression and discouragement and negativism towards and all these things. You gotta get that out of your life. The devil, what's he desire, wanna do? He wants to bring depression into you, sadness, sorrow, upset, frustration, you know, all these things, worry, anxiety, just beat you down in the soul. <laughs> That's the work of the devil. That's all. He, he wants to bring destruction at you. You can't allow the devil to do these kind of things. In fact, if we go over to Psalms 124. Psalms 124. He speaks of the waters, and this is talking about the devil coming at you, because he comes as waters as well. The waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. The devil wants to get to your soul and damage you and bring destruction, get you all down, hurt, wounded, depressed, on and on and on, all these soulish things. 
The proud waters have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord's not given us a prey to their teeth. That's the enemy coming, see? He comes in like that. Our souls escaped. How are you going to come out of this? As the bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare's broken. We're escaped. Our help's in the name of the Lord. You're going to call on the name of the Lord. You're going to speak the word in the name of the Lord. You're going to use your authority. The name of the Lord is the authority given, delegated to us. We have authority over the devils. We can cast them out. We can be healed. We can be delivered from everything that has come against us in the soulish realm. And you need joy. Many Christians don't have joy. You need joy. With joy, you're going to draw the water out of the wells of salvation, out of the inside of you. Back in Isaiah, chapter 35. Isaiah 35. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. Well, why is that going to happen? It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with the joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon will be given unto it. It goes on. He says, strengthen you the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. You've got to get strong. God wants you to get strong. And how do you get strong? Through the word of God in you. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Fear gives place to the enemy. It'll stop the things of God from working in your life. He wants you to get strong. And notice, you, these people, this person obviously is bound up with the enemies. He's got a fearful heart. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you, deliver you, give you victory, bring you out of the bondages. That's what he will come and do. He's going to accomplish this. So we're to get strong. We can't have fear. We've got to know what God will do to come to deliver us. And what's going to happen as he comes? He's going to do miraculous works. The eyes of the blind will be opened. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped. The lame will leap as a heart. The tongue of the dumb will sing. For in the wilderness, what's, why is this all going to happen? Because the waters are going to break out. Who has the waters? You and I have the waters of the word of God in us, if we have gotten it in. Again, this is why the devil comes to get the word out. One of the reasons is he knows that the word produces the waters that produces the river in you, and he cannot allow the river to get into you because he knows what it's going to do when it flows out of you. So he's going to come after the word always. That's why you've got to always be ready to hear the word and do it and walk in it. Here he says, in the wilderness, the waters will break out and streams in the desert where there hasn't been blessing. The waters are going to bring these things forth. The parched ground shall become a pool. I'm not going to stay that way any longer. The thirsty land springs of water. Even in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall the grass with reeds and rushes, which means the devils are all around, but it doesn't matter. God's water is going to come and deliver us and bring forth victory in our life. We're going to be a pool. We're going to be springs of water. Things are going to flourish in the midst of the devils all around, the habitation of dragons all around, which is a type of the evil spirits. But there's a way that you have to walk if you're going to see this. This is a highway. This is the way that you see this, these, this waters come. The highway shall be there and a way. It should be called <clears throat> the way of holiness. Well, that means if we walk in unrighteousness and sin, we walk in the flesh, we don't walk in the ways of the Lord. Are we going to see this work? No, because there won't be any waters. You can only, you're going to get the waters because of holiness. And what's holiness the result of? The fruit of holiness is from the fruits of righteousness in your life. The way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over. Why? Because you're going to drive all uncleanness out of your life. All the uncleanness has got to be cleansed out. If you're going to be the river of God. It shall be for those the wafery men, the fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there. Man, that means the enemies are cast out. The devils are cast out. Nor any ravenous beast. This means a violent one who breaks and destroys and robs, steals, kills, murders. Doesn't Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy? This means you've wiped the enemy out of your life. She'll go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. So this is the way you are to walk, step by step, the redeemed. 
the ones who've been redeemed. Those are the ones who have been bought by the Lord and have come into a relationship with Him, been born again. And he goes on and says, as the ransomed, this is a different word for redeem. Remember, one of them speaks of the kinsman redeemer work. This speaks of the ongoing work of redemption to deliver you, to rescue you, to set you free from all the bondages. And we studied this in the past. The redeemed of the Lord shall return, the ones who get delivered and set free. And they're going to come to Zion. Zion is the place in Scripture, when we've done studies on Zion, the place of a conqueror, the place, it's Mount Zion, having conquered and that's what he's going to bring us to. We come to Zion, the place of conquering, with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Why are you going to have joy? Because of conquering the enemy. Why are you going to have joy? Because you've seen your prayers be responded. Remember that your joy might be full. Everlasting joy upon their heads. They obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and signs shall flee away. That is the result of the waters of God coming into you, which have produced the holiness which has driven out all the uncleanness, which has cast out all the devils as you're acting on the word of God with your authority, driving the enemies out. The deliverance of the Lord comes forth and you've come up to Zion, the conqueror. And now, long, everlasting joy is upon your head. You obtain the joy and gladness. Sorrow and sign flee away. They're finished. This is why you've got to get the river in you. You've got to get the river of God coming into you. And that's only going to happen through you putting the Word of God first place, hearing and doing it, and not letting anything come in you to contaminate you. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You may think, well, it seems like I'm in the wilderness and the desert. God's going to make a way. When you get the word in you, it'll change everything. The desert's not going to stay a desert any longer. The wilderness is not going to stay that way in your life. You're going to see God bring restoration and bring forth fruitfulness and bring forth victory and deliverance in your life. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragon, the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God's the one who gives it. Where does he give it from? His word coming to you. To give drink to my people. Remember, we drink these things in. That's taking it inside of you. And notice he says, to give drink to my people, my chosen. Well, that tells us something. Who's the ones that are chosen? Is that everybody? No, we already talked about that this morning. We talked about the one who didn't put on his wedding garment. He got cast out into outer darkness. Many are called, but few are chosen. Who are the ones that get chosen? The ones that are following the way of the Lord, answering the call of God and doing it. We even see it referred to about the chosen. Deuteronomy 14, 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Who? The holy people. Without holiness, you will not be chosen. Remember, without holiness, no man is going to see the Lord. We see over in the New Testament, it speaks. In 1 Peter chapter 2, you and I are priests before God. And what do we be doing? We're the lively stones, living stones, in the spiritual house of God, Jesus the cornerstone. Our being built up, this means. You've got to be building your spiritual house. Present tense, our being built up a spiritual house continually. But are you doing it yourself? No, God's doing it. Passive voice means somebody else is producing it. Well, how does God do it? Through you doing the Word. Hearing and doing the Word is way, how you build your spiritual house. A holy priesthood, offering up a spiritual sacrifice. And we come down to verse 9. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, one that's ruling and reigning over all your enemies because you use your authority. And what is that producing? A holy nation. The holy nation is the church that is walking in holiness. A peculiar people. You should show the praise of him. He's called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. You've come out of all the darkness. You're walking in the light. You're seeing God work mightily. So who's this uh, waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert that he gives drink to for? The chosen. The ones that have come to the place 
of holiness. That is what God wants in every one of our lives. And it's all, you look at it throughout the Word of God, rivers and water and springs and fountains and everything is all over the place speaking of God's work in our life and what He brings forth. It's the waters from the Word that are coming into us. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that you should go. We get taught, and then he leads us in line with the word of God. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. So what are we supposed to be learning that we're supposed to be led by, that we've been taught? The commandments, which is the word of God. He's saying, if you just hearken to my commandments, then you'd have peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea just keeps flowing in, wave after wave after wave. That's what God wants. He wants you to have peace, and he wants you to have righteousness, the fruits of righteousness, the manifestation of it, of all the rights and privileges and blessings of God that are coming upon you in your life. Isaiah 55. He says in verse 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come you to the waters. What do you need? You've got to come to the waters. That's how you're going to get the things of God. He that hath no money, do I have to come and buy these things with money? Nope. It's all free. You just come to the waters, which is the Lord, through the word of God. Come, buy, eat. Yea, come, buy the, the wine and the milk. That's the fruitfulness and the abundance, the abundant blessings, what this is all refers to. Without money and without price, it's all free, but you've got to come and get it. You've got to come and obtain it by being in the Word of God. It does cost you something, which is you getting in the Word, hearing the Word, doing the Word, getting cleansed, working out your own salvation, obeying, conquering the enemies in your life. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me. Eat ye that which is good. Let your soul delight itself in fatness. That's what God wants. He wants your soul to be a fat soul in the things of God. He wants you to make sure you're only eating that which is good and you're hearkening diligently unto him. Incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live. I'll make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. This is God's blessing coming upon you. Remember, the guy's thirst. What was he said? You've got to come to the waters. That's how you're going to get all your needs met. That's how you're going to see everything happen in your life. That's how you're going to get satisfied and, and get blessed and see your, be, your soul delight itself in fatness because you come to the waters. You incline your ear, you come to him and hear his word and your soul shall live. And the covenant promises and blessings are going to come upon you. That is what God wants. As you are fasting and praying, Part of the blessings of fasting and praying will be the result as you are speaking the things of the Word of God and releasing, the, as you're praying the Word, interceding. This is in the fasting chapter. Remember the fasting chapter, back in verse 6, says, Is not this the fast that I've chosen? Isaiah 58, 6. To loose the bands of wickedness. You're going to get in warfare against the devils. To undo the heavy burdens. See the burdens be set free bondages go or leaving. Let the oppressed go free and you break every yoke. You're going to destroy the works of the enemy when you're fasting and praying in the realm of the Spirit. And he comes down to in verse 11, this is part of the blessings that come and the results from you fasting. The Lord will guide you continually. It'll satisfy your soul in drought. He'll make fat your bones. You'll be like a watered, saturated garden. That's what we want. That's the waters from God coming into us. And you'll be like a spring of water. The waters whose waters fail not. The waters will keep running out of you continually. That's the way the Holy Spirit works. Clear in the Word of God. God wants us to get, fill, get, the, get filled up as a water pot with the waters and see the waters flow out of us, the spiritual house of God, to accomplish the things that He wants. In fact, in Isaiah 66, verse 12, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, 
and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. That's the way it's, everything happens. Peace like a river, glory like a flowing stream is going to come forth. Of course, in Jeremiah, he addresses what there were problems. They had problems. They weren't doing the right thing. They made mistakes. Look what he says about what his people did that were wrong. Jeremiah 2.13, For my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, which is the word, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. They decide to do it their own way, another way. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Your way cannot hold any water. It's only God's way through the word in you that is going to produce this fountain of living waters. They decide to do their own thing, broken cisterns, cisterns. If you don't have chapter and verse on what you do, you're creating a broken cistern, cistern in you because it's not, it's, not, it's not God in it. God's not doing it. It's not going to be holding the water of God. You've got to get the word in you. These people were doing what they wanted to do. They weren't following the word. We see lots of people in all kinds of ways thinking that the Holy Spirit's operating through them. And this is where we've seen a lot of the false prophetic stuff that's come forth in the body of Christ, false so-called revivals, false so-called fire uh, tunnels and things, and doing all this fire stuff, which is absolutely an abomination and wrong. It is totally sin and contrary to the Word of God. Jesus never did any of that. He never taught his disciples to do any of that. Nobody did any of that. You see this happen in the body of Christ all over the place. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The so-called great revival that was supposed to happen in Lakeland, Florida, some years ago, if you recall, the whole thing went down in flames <laughs> because it wasn't of the Lord whatsoever, even though all these so-called apostles, prophets, thought that they had the revelation from God and all these things. And they missed it. The guy was committing adultery on his wife at the time, and the whole thing fell flat and destroyed the whole thing. That's because they weren't following the Word of God. They were following all these false ways. The false prophets, the false teachers, the false people involved in lots of things, false people in deliverance are out there. False healers, supposedly, all this stuff. The false inner healing stuff, thinking that Jesus is going to come back in time and be with you when you got beat up or something 20 years ago is a lie. It's ridiculous. He wasn't there. The devil was there. Well, how's Jesus going to solve the problem? He's not going to go back 20 years in time and now he's with you. That's ridiculous. He's going to come and cast the demons. He's going to, first, he's going to come and make sure you forgive deal with all the things in your attitudes and soul realm. He's going to cast all the devils out and bring healing to you and set you free. And you're going to be restored. How have people come up with this? Give me chapter and verse for this. They don't have it because it's a lie. And this is going on in the body of Christ. I see it in healing ministries and deliverance ministries. They're in trouble. They never studied the Word of God. God has fountains of living waters that are to come in to you. You can't be doing your own thing. you got to be doing His thing. He is going to manifest Himself out of you when you obey Him. Because who's doing the work? God's doing it all. <laughs> we are doing, you and I are doing nothing. That's for sure. All we are is vessels for Him to operate through. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and makes flesh his arm, whose heart departs from the Lord. He's doing things in the flesh. If you don't have chapter and verse, you're in the flesh. For he shall be like a heath in the desert. He won't even see when good cometh. He will inhabit, shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. No water. <laughs> uh, he's not seeing the blessings come whatsoever. He's got, he's got curses. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. Ah, he has a confident expectancy in God. He's trusting in Him. And what's this guy? He's got his eyes on the Lord. He's in the Word. He'll be like a tree planted by the waters. What happens when you're by the waters? You're drinking in the water, aren't you? And the water is coming in to that tree. You and I are the trees of righteousness to get the water in us. Spreads out our roots by the river. Ah, you're just drinking it in every which way. The Word of God. Shall not see when heat cometh, her leaf shall be green, 
that's fruitfulness, shall not be careful in the year of doubt, not going to be fear, or this means fear, or anxious, he's not going to be, uh oh, what's going to happen when there's drought out there? God's going to meet every single one of your needs, and he's going to provide for you. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That means you're going to have continual fruitfulness. Why? Because you're connected into the river of God, which is the word of God in you. That is what he wants. And we can't decide to do it our own way. And then he comes later and he says, O oh Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. They that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they've forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Who is the Lord? He's a fountain of living waters that comes out of you because he comes into you. Uh, anybody that forsakes him, they will be ashamed. Jeremiah 31, verse 9. They shall come with weeping. What does that mean? And with supplications will I lead them. Obviously, they're coming to repentance and turning away from things that aren't right. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters. Aha, this is what they need. They've got to get the river of water into them. In a straight way, upright this means, is the word yashar, which means uprightness. Ah, that means they've corrected their problems. They're not walking in sin any longer. They're walking in righteousness and uprightness, wherein they shall not stumble. And when you walk in line with the word, you won't stumble. When you walk in sin, you'll stumble left and right. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. That's the fruitful, double, doubly fruitful. God wants you to understand that when you come to true godly sorrow with repentance, which will be evidenced by the weeping, and you begin to do what God says, you're not just glossing over things, trying to sweep it under the rug. No, you realize, I gotta, be, I gotta get this thing right. This is a weeping in your heart and a, a conviction in your heart that you turn away from things. And you, go, he'll lead you to walk by those rivers of waters. You gotta get filled up with the word. God wants the word to be filling you up like a river in every single one of us. And you gotta walk a straight way. If you do it, no more stumbling in your life. You're not going to be stumbling any longer. He comes down to, speaks to the ones that redeemed him and ransomed him. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat, wine, and oil, that's all the production of all the prosperity of their crops. And for the young of the flock and the herd, their soul shall be as a watered garden watered, saturated garden. Your soul needs to be so filled up with the Word of God. You got peace, you got joy, you got victory, you got contentment. You don't have any depression whatsoever. You are full of the things of God. Your mind is filled up with the Lord. He heals you and restores your soul in all these areas. And he says you won't sorrow anymore. No more sorrow. God it doesn't matter what's going on. No more sorrow because of the word that comes into you. The goodness of the Lord is going to manifest in you. Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 25. I will make them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. We can cast them all out and get rid of them out of us. They shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Safe, protected, now. He goes on and says, I'll make them in the places round about my hill a blessing, and I'll cause the shower to come down in this season. There'll be showers of blessings. Showers of blessings? You're getting soaked with blessings. <laughs> ah, that means they're just pouring over you. That's what God wants. Rivers showers of blessing coming to us. Verse 27, the fruit trees of the field will yield the fruit. That's us. The earth shall yield or increase. Whatever we put our hand to will bless, be blessed. They'll be safe in their land, protected. They'll know that I am the Lord. You have an intimate personal fellowship with him and you know him. I've broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. You're going to get delivered. Every bondage is going to be broken. When you get the river in you, you got to get the river in you. You got to fill your water pot to the brim. Because that, remember, produces fruitfulness because of the word in you. 
And when you get it filled up, it's because you're keeping the word, you're doing the word. The devil's not taking it out. You're walking in it. It's producing great things in your life. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you'll be clean from all your filthiness, and from your idols will I cleanse you. What's going to happen when the clean water of the Word of God comes into you? It'll deal with you to get rid of all your filthiness. It'll get rid of all the idols, looking to money as a source, or looking to this as a source, looking to yourself as a source, or a person as a source, or possessions, or whatever it is. <laughs> no, those are idols. He wants to get all that out. He wants God to be your total source in life. Joel, chapter 3, verse 18. It shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down the new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. Aha, now the waters are flowing. A fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord. You and I are the house of the Lord. There's to be a fountain coming out of you. A fountain flowing out of you and shall water the valley of Shittim. It was going to water everything. Remember, in the last days, he said, the last great day of the feast, you're to come, I command you, be coming to me and be drinking out of your belly, out of the inside of you, where the word is written in your heart, in your mind, the heart, where it's come, that's where things are going to flow out of. It's going to flow rivers of living water. It's going to come forth. We even see it prophesied coming to the house of David, as it says in Zechariah 13, 1. In that day, there'll be a fountain open to the house of David, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. They're going to get their sin and uncleanness, the Jews, when they come to repentance and receive the gospel. They're going to deal with all that sin and all the uncleanness is going to be run out of their life. God wants you to get filled up with a river, and if, it, if you really have it, the word in you, it's going to be evidenced by what's coming out of your mouth. Look what he says. James 3, 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? No. What should be coming out of you? Sweet water. Why? Because of the water that's in you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will be speaking. You are going to speak good things. You're going to be bringing forth the things that God wants out of your mouth. Because you're going to be speaking the Word of God. And that is what God wants. He wants you to come to that place. Now, the devil will try to work at you, and we just want to cover a couple more things through waters coming at you, too. He comes like waters. Example, Matthew 7. Waters is either flowing out of you, or else it will be the devil coming at you. Look what it says here in Matthew 7, 24. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, he's hearing continually, present tense, and doeth them, present tense, all like unto a wise man that build his house on a rock. We've got to build our spiritual house, see. And you build it on the rock, which is the Lord, through the word of God coming into you. The rain descended. This isn't God's rain. This is the devil's attack. And floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. The devil will come the same way against you. It fell not. Why? Because it was founded upon a rock. The foundation was laid, established. How did they get to the place where they were repel, be able to repel everything that the devil came against them? Because they were hearing and doing the word. The waters came into them, and they built their house on the rock. The waters in you will repel all of the attacks of the enemy that would come against you. What happens to the guy, though, who's not a doer? The guy who hears these sayings and doeth them not, he's like unto a foolish man, build his house on the sand. Ah, he's not going to, he's like out there in the desert, in the wilderness. He's not been doing the word. Just because you heard it, you know, if you don't do it, the devil's going to take it out. 
He can't, he won't take it out if you do it and incorporate it in your lifestyle. If you just heard it and you didn't do it, he'll come and take it out. The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, same attacks, the devil will show up after the word, that's why he's coming, remember? And beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it was a continual downward fall, because the word was is an imperfect tense verb, meaning ongoing continuous action in the past. Great was the continual down, 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 down fall of it. And we see that happening in people's lives. Over in Luke's account, it again shows this. Luke chapter 6, we pick up at verse 46. And he says, Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? What's the key? Doing the word of God. If you don't do the word of God, is he Lord? No. You can say whatever you want. Your works show forth who he is to you. Remember, that's why he says, I know your works, I know your works, I know your works to every one of those churches. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them. Guy's been hearing and doing them. I'll show you to whom he's like. He's like a man build his house, dig deep, laid the foundation on a rock, because you're a hearer and a doer of the word. That means the waters have come into you, remember. Now here's the devil coming. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently, attacking. Oh, the devil will come, and he'll try to really press you upon that house. But notice, it could not shake it. It couldn't do anything to it. Why? Because it was founded on a rock. And when it says there's something you miss here, the word could is the word isko-o-o in the Greek, which means have mighty force. It did not have mighty force to shake it. Why? Because it was what it was founded upon. If you're not founded upon the rock with a foundation laid because of being a hearer and a doer of the word, and you got your water pot filled with water so that you have fruitfulness and you have strength, spiritual strength, the word in you produces power and strength and fruitfulness and produces all these things in your life, if you got that in you, it won't even have mighty force to shake you. You won't even be affected. But if you don't, he that heareth and doeth not, likes a man without a foundation, build a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. Wonder why Christians get wiped out by the devil and wondering why? They always want to blame, wonder why God's allowed this. God had nothing to do with it. It was the attack of the devil, and you didn't do what was necessary to be, have built your foundation on a rock. And when you heard the word, the devil came in, and of course he's coming to try to steal, kill, and destroy anyway, and wipe you out. It should not be happening in any Christian's life. If it is, it's because they haven't got the foundation built. They haven't gotten the waters in them. They haven't become a river of water in them on the inside of them. A couple more scriptures. I know we're going a little far, fast, farther than we normally do, but we want to finish this part up. We also see the enemy showing up. Isaiah 59. Verse 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rise of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, he attacks like a flood, like a river coming from him. The Spirit of the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit, shall lift up a standard against them. This word is in the palel stem. The palel stem, the stems are different. When we look at the spalel stem, it means to drive at. The Holy Spirit will drive at or drive against him. And why would that be? Because you already have the armor of God on. You put rest, righteousness as a breastplate, helmet of salvation, put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, clad with zeal as a cloak. We talked about putting on the garments of God this morning so that you then will have the spiritual strength and all and the power of God to be able to ward off anything that comes at you, which is what produces the river of God in you. In fact, we see the devil attacking, he ta ta attack in all kinds of ways. It's interesting what it says over in Genesis chapter 21, verse 25. 
Abraham reprove Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abraham, Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. That's a type of the devil coming to violently take away that which God has sown in you, the well of water. He took it away. He didn't want you to have a well of water. You see the books about wells all over the place. It's talking about well, these guys were always fighting against them, trying to steal their wells, take them away, and not let them have any wells of water. The devil doesn't want you to have a well of water. He didn't want any water in you because he knows what it'll do. That's how God works with the river of God and how the Holy Spirit operates to accomplish everything. Genesis 26, verse 15. Look what the Philistines did. All the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father's, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Stopped them up. What's that mean? A bunch of wrong things came in. A bunch of rubbish comes in. You could be a well of water once and you let a lot of rubbish come in you. Stop up your well. Well, nothing coming out. Nothing operating through you. Because you got a bunch of rubbish that came into you. You got a bunch of things that stopped up you, and what's that? The Philistines are a type of the devils coming in to sow all type of garbage in you to stop the wells of, well of water from operate in you at all. <laughs> God wants you to rise up and to walk in the ways of the Lord. Get the Word of God in you. Get the Word in you to the point where you are a river. Your water pot is to be filled, filled. And we'll close going back to the scripture we began with. John 7. This is the way the Holy Spirit works. Get away from all this false teaching garbage that's out there in the body of Christ. And start, if you don't have chapter and verse for everything you do, you are in the flesh and error and deceit. In fact, you could be false operating as a false in any aspect. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. He commands us to come unto him and drink. We're taking water into us, the word of God. What happens when the waters come into you? He that is believing on me, which is one who is hearing and doing the word and walking in it, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this he's talking about the Holy Spirit, who they couldn't receive at that point, but they did later. The rivers of living water are to come into you and flow out of you. It will come and bring all the blessings. It will bring the cleansing in your life. It will bring the deliverance. It will bring all the promises to pass. It will set you free from everything. At the same time, the devil will come and attack like with a river or flood or stream against the things in you. And if you haven't got the word established in you, you'll get blown away. That's why so many Christians get blown away by the attacks of the devil. It shouldn't be happening. You are to have the river of water in you which produces fruitfulness, power, strength, might, victory, brings everything that God, uh, manifest, manifestation of God in your life. God is coming to dwell. I guess we're going to look at one other scripture because you need to realize from an end time standpoint, we looked at it this morning, we referred to it a little bit earlier, but this is what you need to realize. Psalms 46, verse 1, God's our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. That's great, but look what it says next. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed. The word removed means being changed and altered. It's in the fulfill. When is that going to happen? When the judgments are coming on the earth at the time of when Jesus is pouring out the judgments in the beginning of the tribulation, bringing all this destruction. <laughs> the nations are going to be absolutely going bananas at that time. And though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, that's from volcanoes and earthquakes. The waters, therefore, roar and be troubled. The waves will be roaring and everything will be raging. The mountains shake with the swelling thereof, the earthquakes. This is all describing all the end time events that are going to happen. They're going to happen when Jesus is bringing the judgments on the earth, when he takes back the rule and reign. 
after at the end of the church age. But what else is there? We're here at the time, remember. There is a river. Where's the river? That's the river of God. And where's that coming into? Into the house of God, the temple, which is supposed to rise from the ankles to the loins, to the, to the knees, to the loins, to, to be, fill, be overflowing us. The streams whereof shall make the glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. That's the place where God comes to dwell. And tabernacles speaks of the fulfillment of this at the time of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the end result of the fulfillment of the work of God in the remnant of the body of Christ who have listened to him and gone on to maturity, fruitfulness, and come to the place of being the full man of the stature in Christ. It's going to happen. The glory of God. And notice, this, this, this is talking about the city of God in this, where this is, the tabernacles, this place, is talking about the church. God is in the midst of her. That's what we are, the church. She shall not be moved. <laughs> We're not going to be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Right early is a revelation of when it happens. Because the word early means at the time of daybreak. The beginning of the day. And this is the beginning of the third day as we talked about which is the beginning of the millennial reign of Jesus when the tribulation comes and God takes dominion and starts to bring the judgments upon the nations. At the same time, God will be in the midst of this mighty church that has become a river with the streams of God operating in, in it and out of it, the holy place of the tabernacle of God manifesting himself. God will help her. We will not be moved. The heathen will be raging. The nations will be going crazy. <laughs> they will. The kingdoms were moved. He utters his voice and the earth melted. This speaks of when there's going to come a time when this kind of fast forwards ahead. All the destruction that's going to be happening because of the tremendous desolation. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. But come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he's made in the earth. He's coming to bring destruction upon all this. And then he's going to have the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, which he will do. What's going to happen then? He's going to make wars to cease in the end of the earth, break the bow, cut the spear in the sunder, burn the chariot in the fire. No more wars in the millennial reign. There won't be any. It'll be eliminated for a thousand years until the devil's loose for a little season to try to deceive the people. And then he's going to be wiped out and fire from God the Father in heaven is going to wipe them all out. And then there'll be the final judgment of everything and they'll be cast in the lake of fire and then the earth's going to be all burned up. It'll be a new heavens and a new earth. And after that, the Father is going to come down from the new Jerusalem and we are going to be dwelling with him. This is why you and I must walk the walk and see this mighty work of the river of God coming into you in all aspects. The word of God is going to bring forth everything that he, everything that he purposes in your life. And he says, be still, be quiet, know that I am God. Be at peace. You aren't going to be flustered. You know what's going to, when you know the word, you can stay at peace regardless of what happens. Know that I'm God, I'll be exalted among the nations and I'll be exalted in the earth. That's right. It is going to happen. And Jesus Christ will begin to rule and reign for a thousand years. Praise God for the great work. We have to get ourselves filled up. And as I asked this morning, how much water is in you? How filled up are you in you? Is the water up to the ankles? Is it up to the knees? Is it up to the loins? Is the water coming in you, it just fills you up to the brim. The river of God is coming into you and you are allowing God the, through the Holy Spirit, he operates through the river, remember, the word of God in you to flow out of you. Of course, coming into you, he's going to bring all kinds of blessings will come on you. Showers of blessings are coming out, come on you. You're going to get, of course, got to get clean. If you don't get cleaned up, he can't do it. The glory of God will not manifest in an unholy vessel. The clean, that's why, what should you be doing now? 
Get the word in you. Get cleansed. Get rid of everything that's not of God. Cast out all the devils. Get rid of all the filthiness of the flesh. Get out of the world. Deal with everything in your life. Everything. To be the holy vessel of the Lord, the holy place of the tabernacle of God, because God is coming to manifest himself, to work, he's coming to be a habitation of God in us as the corporate body of Christ. Praise God for the great work that he is accomplishing. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God that brings revelation of how the Holy Spirit operates through the river of God, which is the word of God, coming into me. I will be a hearer and a doer of the word. I will build my house on the rock. The foundation will be laid as I'm a hearer and a doer of the word. I will not let the devil take the word out of my heart. I will walk in the word, speak the word, do the word, see the word of God, bring forth every promise. I will be cleansed of everything that is not of the Lord, I will see God accomplish His great work to bring me to maturity and perfection. I thank you. This river of God is coming into me. And it's, I'm going to be filled to the brim. I will be a river for God to flow through. The fountain will come out of me and bring forth life healing, victory, wherever I go. The glory of God will be upon me as the river of God. I thank you for all that you're accomplishing in my life because I will be ready to be a part of this glorious church because of the rivers of living water that are in me and are flowing out of me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know the one thing you should get out of all this? It's the Word. Anything contrary to the Word, get rid of it. Stop it. Cease. Only do what the Word says. Don't compromise anything. If it's not of the Lord, root it out. Get rid of it. Don't be associated with it. Get rid of everything that's not of the Lord. You want to have the pure water, which is brings the sanctifying. In fact, we gave that out of Ephesians 6, 5, 5, 26, and 27 today, how it produces the sanctification when this bathing of the water of the word comes into your life so that you'll be the holy vessel, the holy church, ready for it to be presented unto the Lord. Because remember, only the ones that have the garments of God on are the ones that can be presented unto him that'll be ready for the marriage. You need to hear this morning's message. It had a lot of important things in it. Father, we thank you for all that you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of your word. We will see the river of God come into us and see you accomplish your complete, total work in our life. Thank you for much fruit as we hear and do this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.